friends, thanks for stopping by. My name's Miss Gooden. I teach second grade at Twin Hickory and I love to teach math. Today I'm going to talk to you about counting a collection of coins. In second grade, we count collections of coins up to two dollars. Let's start with this I can statement. I can count a collection of pennies nickels, dimes, and quarters whose total value is two dollars or less. And I can use the cent symbol, the dollar symbol, and decimal point to write a value of money. Why is it important to know how to count coins? Well, we need money to buy goods or pay for services. In order to buy something, you need to know if you have enough money. It would also be helpful to know if you will be getting change back. Did you give the cashier more money than the cost of the item? Let's start with a review of coins. As you see the coin on the screen, please say the name of the coin and how much it is worth or what is its value. This is a quarter and it's worth 25 cents. Go ahead and say that with me. A quarter is worth 25 cents. Nice job. Here you see a picture of the front and back of a quarter, and you'll see the front and back of each coin I show you. It's helpful to recognize both the front and the back of each coin. When we have quarters, we need to count by 25, since that is how much a quarter is worth. Let's practice. 25, 50, 75, 100, or one dollar. We know that 100 cents is equal to or is the same as one dollar. So let's say one dollar when we're counting money. This is a dime and it's worth 10 cents. Go ahead and say that with me. A dime is worth 10 cents. Wonderful. When we have dimes, we count by tens. Count with me. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, a dollar. Remember, even though a dime is smaller than a nickel, it's worth more because a nickel is only worth five cents and a dime is worth 10 cents. We know that five is less than 10. This is a nickel and it's worth five cents. Please say that with me. A nickel is worth five cents. Super. When we have nickels, we count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and on up to a dollar. Be sure to look closely at the nickel and the quarters. They're similar in size and second graders sometimes get them mixed up. George Washington is on the quarter, and Thomas Jefferson is on the nickel. You probably know that George Wa what George Washington looks like, so maybe that will help you remember that he's on the quarter. If you see George Washington, it's a quarter. This is Thomas Jefferson, so it's a nickel. This is a penny, and it's worth one cent. Go ahead and say that with me. A penny is worth one cent. Wonderful. When we have pennies, we don't skip count. We just count the regular way by ones without skipping any numbers. The challenge in counting money is to be able to switch the amount you are skip counting by until you count all the coins. For example, if I'm counting two quarters and three dimes, first I skip count by 25s and then I switch and skip count by tens. Let's try it. First, we're going to sort the coins into groups. We put all the quarters in a group and all the dimes in a group. Then we put the groups in order from the greatest amount to the least amount. Now we can skip count the quarters. 25, 50. And then we start counting with the dimes, so we have to switch to counting by tens. We left off here at 50, 60, 70, 
80. This collection of coins is worth 80 cents. Let's try another example. This time we have more coins. I put the dimes in one group and the nickels in another group. Dimes are worth more, so I'm going to count them first. 10, 20, 30. We have 30 cents in dimes, and now we count the nickels. But we'll skip count by fives because nickels are worth five cents. We left off at 30. 35, 40, 45, 50. This collection of coins is worth 50 cents. Let's try another example. This one has even more coins, and I see three different types of coins here. So we will have three different piles. I've sorted the coins by their value and then placed them in order from greatest to least. So now we're going to skip count the quarters, so we're going to skip count by 25, 25, 50, 75, a dollar, a dollar 25. We have a dollar 25 in quarters. Next we have dimes, so we're going to switch to skip counting by tens. We left off here at a dollar 25, a dollar 35, a dollar 45, a dollar 55, a dollar 65. And then we're going to count the nickels, $1.70, $1.75, This collection of coins is worth $1.80. Hmm, but I'm wondering if we could count this collection in a different way. Sorting the coins and then ordering them from greatest to least is a good strategy, a good plan for counting coins. But is there a different way we could group and count this collection? When I finished counting the quarters, I was thinking about counting the nickels next. What, what if we tried that? We don't need to count the quarters again because that's the same. We ended up with $1.25, but now we can switch and count by five, count the nickels and count by five. So that was $1.25, $1.30, $1.35, $1.40. And now we can count the, count the dimes. So we count by tens on the decade, which may be a quicker way to count. Starting at $1.40, we count $1.50, $1.60, $1.70, $1.80. We got the same answer, but used a different strategy. You may group the coins in another way that makes them easier for you to count. You may even put, group, you may even put coins in groups that are not all dimes or all nickels, but that make other amounts and are easier for you to count. Use the strategy or the plan that makes the most sense to you for counting coins. Use this short pause to write down another way you could group these coins and count them in a way that is, that is quick and efficient for you. you came up with some great ways to group and count those coins. Let's talk about how we write down money. We use the symbols on this slide to represent or to stand for money terms. So here you can see that I wrote down the amount in words, 25 cents. Then you can see the dollar, dollar sign, here's the dollar sign, also showing 25 cents which is a little bit of unusual uh, way to think about it. And then over here, we just have $16, where we write the dollar sign and then the number, but we say it the opposite way. We say $16. And then here we have the cent sign. This shows 25 cents as well. And the last thing I want to show you is the decimal point. It looks the same as a period at the end of a sentence, but in math we use it to show amounts less than $1. So anything after the decimal point is less than $1. We only use the decimal point with the dollar sign, only with the dollar sign. Counting coins is a lot of fun, and I like to see how many different ways I can group and count a collection of coins. 
One way you can practice counting coins is to ask someone at home to pull out the coins in their pocket and let you count them. Put the coins out on the table and look for ways to group the coins so counting them is efficient, quick, and accurate for you. Then group the coins and count them. See how many ways you can group these coins and count them. I hope you have lots of coins to count. Thanks for coming by to talk math with me and learn about counting coins. I had a lot of fun with you today.